more so than the world of sporting clays. Getting into game shooting can be a little bit intimidating. So today we're gonna to look at how one gets into it, some of the stuff you need, and a little bit about it. Let's go. So for the purpose of this video, what I'm going to be talking about is the English style driven shooting, or at least driven shooting in England. Some of these things will refer also to sort of a rough, walked up or mini driven style of shooting, but I'm going to focus around driven shooting more than anything else. So to start, what do you need to get started? Very little. I mean, technically you don't even really need a gun. Most places will be able to loan you a gun. Uh, so just some basic dress, a shirt, a tie, a waistcoat or a waterproof jacket but at the very basics a pair of moleskins a shirt and a tie that could set you back 40 quid will get you ready to go obviously nicer clothes are nicer and so a full tweed suit is preferable or something in that sort of similar lineup you can expect to drop anywhere from again that sort of 40 pound mark all the way up to a, over a thousand pound for your shooting clothing and that's pretty much all you need when you first go out there is just one more point that i'd like to say that i think shoot day fashion is one of my personal things that I absolutely love and uh, a few of me and my friends don't deride other people but we have a lot of in jokes about what people wear and what people don't wear and um, we I mean you've got to enjoy that I personally I love wearing tweed wearing tweed is the ultimate clothing and if I could get away with wearing it every day I totally would apart from uh, I'm not rich enough to have a tailor-made suit that I wear every day yet. If in doubt about what to wear contact the person the organizer of the day you're going on or if you're joining a syndicate which we'll get into in a minute speak to the syndicate manager, the shoot manager, the shoot captain and say, what would you recommend? Because you don't want to turn up somewhere where there's a big in-joke about something like having a jumper with a pheasant on it and have a pheasant jumper on. I mean, it would just be bad, wouldn't it? On the final point of fashion, colour. Most people will be wearing green. It's nice to see other colours in the field. I'm a green kind of guy. I like green, but I also like having heavily coloured accents in my shooting suit. Bright orange socks, bright purple socks, bright purple tie, bright shirts, because uh, life's too short to be in plain, plain green. Obviously, horses of course, and if I am going out somewhere, there might be a lot of woodcock or wild birds. I'm gonna wear something a little bit duller because they're going to be that much more au fait with oh, there's a human, let's fly away. So there is an element of camouflage in the field in the line if you want more birds over you for certain quarry species. However, for the most part, if you're shooting driven pheasant, they're not gonna to care too much whether you're wearing a white shirt or a green shirt or a blue tie or a red tie, for the most part, unless you're shooting wild pheasants. But let's move on. So for just that small amount of money, plus the cost of a driven day, you can go out shooting. If you contact a reputable sporting agent, someone like Howard, who we've had on the show before, and say, look, I'm new into it. Is it possible that I can have a loader and a gun and some ammunition, please, for when I'm there? And all you have to do is rock up. That's it, just rock up. So it can potentially be very, very easy in terms of the kit list that you need. Obviously, buying a gun is kind of part of the fun. So a gun, a gun slip, and a cartridge bag. A cartridge bag or cartridge belt, some way of carrying enough cartridges for the drive. A drive is a portion of the day that they'll push out a certain piece of ground over the top of you, for those of you who haven't figured that one out already. The cost of a gun really doesn't need to be a huge amount, neither does the cost of shooting, which we will get into in a bit. So the cost of the gun can be very basic. A 40 pound non-ejector side by side from an auction will kill pheasants the same as a 40,000 or 400,000 pound gun. A nicer gun will shoot nicer, feel better, and be an all round more pleasant thing to own, bring you a little bit more joy, potentially. A gun slip, I'd always say buy a leather gun slip, or at least a canvas and leather one. Leather gun slip purely based on the fact that you can wipe it down. They last a lifetime and they don't look horrible. It's easy maintenance. Yes, it's a little bit of an investment, but it really is anymore. You can pick up a leather gun slip for less than 100 quid now. Buy one, wipe down, it's perfect, it's clean. What more could you possibly want? Preferably with a full zip so you can open it up to dry it out because on a wet day, you're gonna want that. A cartridge bag, I would recommend 100 plus because on certain points of a day, you might not be going back to the lorry, your car to top up an ammo. Having a 100 plus cartridge bag is a good idea. Again, I like leather bags purely for the fact you can wipe them down. Other bags are available and everyone's got a personal preference on that. Cartridge belts are not really my thing. Um, not on game shooting anyway. They have their place for rough shooting and walked up when you only need sort of 20 shells and you don't want to just chuck them in your pockets and it's warm, for example. Uh, so I warm when I went out wild fowling with Nick. Perfect application for something like that because you only need sort of 10 cartridges in front of you and you need to be able to go, I need that one, I need that one, or I need that one. On a game shoot, more than likely you will only have one type of cartridge and if you do have two, you've got two pockets, you've got a cartridge bag in a pocket, something like that. 
So gear wise you do not need a lot. Ear defenders, 10 up plus, you know, so you can invest pretty much whatever you want in the gear. So how do you get started game shooting? You've gone and got some gear, buying stuff is really easy, obviously. So how do you go out and go game shooting? Well, there's a multitude of avenues. The first is join a syndicate. Joining a syndicate, uh, again, there's multiple types of syndicate. So a syndicate is a group of people who always shoot together. There's various types of that. One type may be a group that clubs together, rents land, puts birds out, and it's called a DIY syndicate, where they do all of the work themselves. So essentially you'll go every Saturday for a work party, and boom, there you go. There's a lot of those about. You can look on Guns on Pegs, Facebook, there's a lot of websites out there, Shooting UK, Classifieds, that kind of thing. And there'll be lots of adverts for syndicates. They might be DIY, semi-DIY, DIY being the cheapest because you're putting in most of the work, set part-time keep it or semi keep it where you'll be paying a little bit more because you'll be paying a full-time or part-time person to run it for you or a, a true syndicate where you'll be all clubbing in renting the land or buying a certain amount of days off of an estate so you'll be the estates syndicate you'll get slightly better rates that way you'll be able to shoot with the same people every time and you know it increases the social aspect and if you're just looking to get into shooting and you haven't got any friends who do it or few friends who do it joining a syndicate is a great way to make an instant seven friends who you shoot with every day, common bond, and actually shooting is about the people you shoot with and the experience, not about the quarry or the game or the anything like that, really, really, because I've shot some of the best days and some of the best birds with people I dislike and actually they turn into some of the worst days. Fascinating, isn't it? So shooting with a syndicate you like really helps. On that note, when going to a syndicate, it's really worthwhile meeting the guys, hanging out with the guys, finding out what they expect from you and you expect from them, from all the way from DIY all the way through to a full one, what the crack is, and go see if you like them. And if you like them, it's probably a good idea. What you can expect to pay for a syndicate, from nothing all the way through to an awful lot. So there are syndicates out there that will charge you less than 600 pounds a year and they'll shoot every week. And there'll be 10 of you and you'll come home with 12 birds between you and you'll go home with a brace or nothing or something or just one or two birds, and but you'll have a great time. There's syndicates that will put down more birds, and so on, so on, and so forth. You can pay pretty much as much as you like, up to and including the syndicates that are tens of thousands of pounds, which there's nothing wrong with, because you'll get a lot of shooting for your tens of thousands of pounds. Regardless of how much money you invest in your syndicate, make sure of two things. Firstly, that you like the people you shoot with, and secondly, that you can actually meet the requirements of the shoot. If you can't actually make all of the shoot days, it might be terrible value for money. Make sure that someone could stand in if you can't make it. And, you know, just just be, make sure you actually can fulfill the contract that they, you're paying for, pretty much. One final thing on syndicates is that there is a type of thing called a roving syndicate where you and a bunch of group mates will go around different shoots, but you'll be the same group of people, you'll set the same amount of money into the pot, and you'll buy, or the shoot captain will organize five or six different shoots, or maybe more different shoots, or anywhere between two and 50, different shoots for the season. You'll travel around and do each of them, but you will be a syndicate of people, a roving syndicate. Anyway, let's move on. Outright purchase. So you can just go, go to a sporting agent and go, look, I would like to go and shoot birds. Just me, this is my budget. You can expect to pay anywhere from about sort of 300 up to a few thousand for a day's shooting. So figure out what you want and how much you want to invest. What you want to shoot, where you want to shoot, and you know, be as honest with an agent as possible. They will do something called, like I said, a scratch day where they will go, all right, well, all these people want to do a different day of shooting and let's put them together. And a good agent will be able to sort of have enough people coming to them. They'll go, all right, that person will get on with that person. So let's, let's actually try and form a group of people that are gonna have a good day together, which like I've said, is really, really important. Actually, before I move on, uh, we as TGS were looking at maybe putting together a scratch day for those people who might be interested in game shooting uh, around September time or maybe January time, beginning or end of the season. So let us know if you'd be interested in that, probably about 500-ish pounds for the day. That might be quite an interesting thing for those who feel uncomfortable perhaps going with people they don't know, why don't you come with us? So how does one go about buying a day shooting for a single or two pegs? And if you do have enough friends to go together and you all want to try it new, go and do it. Um, just go to an agent and buy a full day. But if you're looking for single pegs or whole days, best places to look, go to an agent. I, because it's just easier to buy from someone you trust 
you know that their responsibility is all on them and makes the whole thing a more hassle-free experience. So I buy everything pretty much exclusively through Howard. Go on Facebook, there's loads of offers, deals, last minute things on Facebook, through agents, get on mailing lists, and you'll be bombarded with opportunities. And take a hold of them. If it is your first day shooting, I would recommend wholeheartedly having a loader. A loader is someone who will stand with you, they will load your gun for you, they'll point out where you're going wrong, they'll keep your etiquette in line, and just make sure you don't do anything silly, dangerous, safety on your first shoot day. I mean, don't even need to touch on that because it's such an important thing that you should already be fully aware of that. But having a loader with you on your first day for the cost of a loader is worth every single penny. So when you're booking your day, either ask if you can take a loader or ask if the estate can arrange a loader. They'll have a whole host of people who would have loaded on that shoot before, will know the drives, know where the birds are coming from, know your abilities, be able to shout where birds are coming from, shout quietly in your ear, there's one to your right, sir, that kind of thing. And actually that on your first shoot day will just make the whole thing just that much more pleasant, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Okay, the final thing I'd like to touch on is shooting culture or driven shooting culture. And for that, because I mean, I'm, I'm too involved in it to really know the difference between that and, and reality, because that is my reality. Sasha's gonna come on camera, who is somebody who's only really been in it for less than a year, who's only just done one season, and that's just with me, just sort of seeing and meeting new people, and he's gonna help me sort of explain to you what driven shooting culture is. So for those of you who don't know, this is Sasha, the man behind the scenes of the camera, the legendary filmmaker yeah. of TGS. Sasha. Uh, he's been with us, what, since November? Seven months. Yeah, so you've seen a whole season. Mm -hmm. You'd never been in sort of country culture before, driven no. shooting culture, and we kind of dragged you along to try and make you understand why we do what we do, yeah. and or at least make you a more empathetic filmmaker. <laughs> yes. Tell us about your first shooting experience or your shooting experience of the last season. What is different? What, what would people expect who'd never done anything like that before? Well, the, the first thing that gets me is a tradition. Now, growing up, I football clubs, chess club, I'm actually a grandmaster. You know, probably know that about me. Yeah, I do. Um, you, you won't play me, though, to find out. Well, it's, don't embarrass you, I'm my boss. Thanks, mate. Right, so it's the tradition. So everyone, you sort of, you turn up on the game shoot and everyone meets at a certain spot and then you've got certain rituals, like you have your breakfast. Breakfast is very important. Very important. So you have your breakfast and then it's like sort of stepping in a time machine and going back a couple hundred years ago. In a really beautiful way, I must say. You've got all the attire, so clothing is very important. That's the first thing that threw me off because I don't have any smart clothes, particularly when I started this job. So Johnny puts me in his size, what? A extra million large. jacket, extra, extra, extra large, large trousers. I'm walking around looking like Mate, our he's chest my dad. size is about the same. Sorry, hey. Um, sorry, what are you saying? So... <laughs> it's a <deformity. laughs> Yeah, so you give me your massive extra large jacket that didn't fit around my chest, so we had to get a bigger one. But you give me the extra large trousers, I look like an idiot. Here's one thing, if you're not within the shooting community, you didn't grow up in the shooting community, that you need to understand, right? Invites. This is a key term, right? It needs to be underlined, highlighted, all that good stuff. It's not like a because birthday invite. No, it's not a birthday in in invitation. And now I grow up, someone invites you, because I'm, obviously I'm very cool, quite high up on the... Everyone invites you to... They invite me to everything. Social events, and your social calendar is very dense. I have dense. to turn it down because I have to let them know I'm better than them. Yeah, that's not what it is. An invitation is a formal... Offering. Offering that culturally can and should not be declined. Without exceptional reason. But it's an etiquette should. and respect thing though, more than anything. That's, that's not how a lot of people nowadays operate. An invitation doesn't hold the amount of weight it does with that within the shooting community. I would say just engage in the banter, be talkative, Get be sociable, in. otherwise people are going to think you're a weirdo and you don't want to be in that situation. It is a It's a social event, you go there for the camaraderie yeah. and the shooting is a sort of secondary thing. Yeah, and I've been on a few shooters where there is clearly somebody who is just, just there for the shooting aspect. No one likes that. No one likes them. Yeah. You know, don't be greedy. Yeah. We make mistakes occasionally. It happens and to the best of us. It does happen to the best of us. However, on the whole, don't be greedy. Yeah. Because it's bad. And if you are going to be greedy, be funny and sociable. Yes, at least have people like you through that. Oh, and don't shoot birds that sh should obviously not be shot. You're going to end up disliked by everyone very soon. Too low, definitely somebody else's. Yeah. Unless you know them. <laughs> right. In which case, it's funny. <laughs> 
Uh, I think that's pretty much, I don't know. Is there anything else you got to say? I would say they are the key points to not be perceived as a weirdo. When you first turn up. up. Just yeah. get talking to people. Yeah, yeah, be sociable. Yeah. It's tough when you don't get any references which are being thrown around. Yeah, I know it's quite hard to join a long standing syndicate or yes. a long standing group of friends as a complete outsider. But on the whole, as long as those people aren't complete knobs, yeah. they will include you. Yes. Because. Yeah. People are there to have fun. We're there to have the fun and have a great social time and make friends and yeah. get bond in a very old fashioned way. Bond around a hunt. Yeah, it's not like clay shooting, it's not like deer stalking. Like, clay shooting is still very much geared towards getting your shots, it's sociable, don't get me wrong. But it's very competitive. Yeah, the game shoot is, is all about the camaraderie yeah. and spending time with people and having fun and then shooting a few birds. Shooting a few birds and having yeah. some fun. That, I mean, that's, that's literally it. That's literally it. So I think that pretty much sums up getting started in game shooting. Get started. Go on your first day. Just do it. There's very little boundaries in front of you apart from potential fear of not enjoying yourself or not going on a day. Yes, it can be a little bit of money, but you don't have to shoot 100 days a season. One day a season is better than no days a season. Two or three days a season is really nice. More than that is a luxury. I mean, it's a luxury to do one day, isn't it? So get out, enjoy yourself. If you would like to be involved in the TGS shoot, if you'd like to come out game shooting and you feel like coming with us is gonna make it a little bit easier, our email address is in the description below. Drop us an email and we'll stay in touch. We've got nothing solid planned, but we think it would be a nice idea to get more people involved in one of the best sports around. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care, goodbye. If you've got any questions, chuck them below. And if you've got any comments and references, also chuck them below. Take care, goodbye, and we'll see you next time.